السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters, today is Monday the 23rd of March 2020 The time is approximately 10.30pm here in Zimbabwe I just want to draw your attention to something amazing and that is the benefit of seeking the forgiveness of Allah during times of this nature People might say, why should I seek the forgiveness of Allah? Is it a punishment? Well, I want to tell you, even if it were, even if it were, Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Allah will not punish them while they are seeking forgiveness. So if you are seeking forgiveness, the punishment will not come. And if you think there was punishment when a person begins to seek forgiveness, it is converted into a blessing of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like I said earlier, it's wrong for us to say something is a punishment or not when we cannot know except through revelation if something was definitely a punishment. But a simple test is anything that brings you closer to Allah is not a punishment. And anything that has distanced you from Allah, makes you upset and angry and question Allah, that may well just be a punishment of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, whenever a calamity happens, ask yourself, Am I involved in sin? Am I involved in that which is immoral, unacceptable? Am I involved in that which is, uh, you know, have I usurped the wealth of others? Am I doing that which is unacceptable? Am I abandoning my prayers? Am I uh, doing something that would be displeasing to Allah? You just ask yourself those questions. There's no harm. In fact, there can only be benefit and we need to turn to Allah. Really, we need to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine people did not used to go to the masjid. Now when the masjids in many places are minimizing and actually suspending congregational activities, people are up in arms. But you are the same people who never came to the masjid and today you're up in arms. I pray that that is life changing in the sense that we realize the value of the masjid so that once this temporary measure is lifted, we will be flocking to the masjid and we will be cherishing the favor of Allah that we have these masajid. I repeat, those who have become passionate about this, you know, this issue, and they, they, they are so upset sometimes. Sometimes they are the ones who are guilty of not ever making use of the masjid in the correct way. Look at Salatul Fajr. We have a few people. Look at Dhuhr. We only have a few. Look at Asur. We have very few. Maghrib and Isha in some places a little bit better. But my brothers and sisters, we can do much better when it comes to praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, people abandoned the, the, the modest dress. And what happened? They became from among those who perhaps in some places were banned from some of it. We don't want that to happen, my brothers and sisters, to us. We don't want to realize when it's too late the value of something. It happens even in marriage. A person does not appreciate his or her spouse. And once the divorce happens, then they say to themselves, you know what? Oh, I just lost a good person. But that regret came too late, too late. Let's learn to really appreciate the favors of Allah upon us. Seek the forgiveness of Allah. You know, every time people sought the forgiveness of Allah in any difficulty, relief came. It definitely came. Listen to what Prophet Noah told his people. I told my people, seek the forgiveness of Allah. He is most forgiving. He will send for you the rain and the relief that you are so yearning for that you need. He will send a lot of it in abundance. We need relief. We turn to Allah. We promise to change our ways and habits. We promise to become better people. We promise to be people who not only fulfill their duty unto Allah, but who reach out to others and the other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at, at times like these. Remember to spend in the cause of Allah. You know, if you want to help of Allah, help someone else and Allah will help you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. I thought I'd just make a short video and I will be making short videos in the next few days. And inshallah, let's hope that we can continue doing this. My brothers and sisters, the good news is that very few people would actually die of this particular virus. But because we care for the elderly and because we care for those who are perhaps somehow compromised in their immune system, those who have other challenges, underlying issues, health matters, because we care for those. That is why we're so passionate about this issue. Take things seriously. If you're on lockdown, take it very seriously, even if you're not on lockdown. My advice, stay at home, because you know what? We have the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ. He says, when you hear of a plague, stay in your house. This is actually a narration of Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal. Don't leave your house. 
Subhana, subhanallah. It's amazing advice. One narration and the common one speaks about the place, the place, meaning uh, don't leave the place where the plague is and don't enter the place where the plague is if you were out. But if you look at the Prophet Sallallahu time, the houses were, the whole house was just two meters by three and so on. The whole of Medina was not even the size of what Masjid Nabawi is today. So Baqir was just outside of Medina, outside of the city. And subhanAllah, uh, what we have today, the place of Eid was also outside of the city. So these were different places. I'd like to think, you know what, within your suburb, within your own home, depending on the restrictions placed on you, remember, I would not want to come out of my home unnecessarily. I have stayed at home. I haven't gone for Salah. I haven't gone out except for dire, dire necessity. And that too, with a lot of um, uh, precautions being taken with my face covered, you know, and everything happening. Uh, if I don't need to come out of my vehicle, I won't and so on. Brothers and sisters, that is our duty. The duty that Allah has placed on our shoulders. Take it seriously. Nobody is saying abandon Salah. In fact, become Salah meaning prayer. Become more regular with your prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did I say? We need to cry. We need to cry about our sins and we need to think about them. What did we do? What have we done? If we've done something, this is the time to turn to Allah. And if we don't know what we've done, still seek the forgiveness of Allah. Astaghfiruka lima la a'lamuhu. The Prophet ﷺ used to say, I seek forgiveness for that which I don't even know. We need that dua much more. My brothers and sisters, this is a good call. It's a serious thing. And uh, uh, no need to be uh, depressed about isolation sometimes or depressed about quarantine in certain instances, depressed about uh, being on lockdown in certain instances. We're in it together. Human beings are in this together. And we as Muslimin have an added advantage where we've got so much to do. That seclusion, remember Musa alayhi salam was placed in a small box. Imagine a little baby in a box. But that was how he was ultimately saved by the help of Allah. And the same happens to the people of the cave in seclusion. Remember, they were saved. How many years was that? I don't know how long this is going to last, but I know it is the mercy of Allah. We might come out of it having struggled and suffered in one way, but we will come out having gained in many other ways. So let's be considerate of others. Learn to give people hope no matter how hopeless you may be feeling. It's time to give everyone hope and it's time to be together. Think of activities in the home. Fulfill your salah with jama'ah. Uh, spend the time with exercise. I have my family actually uh, and I'm giving them all the lectures. We were just discussing today that why don't you record all of these lectures. But you know when you speak to family it's a little bit different. I pray my brothers and sisters that uh, yeah I'm talking to you here from the same. Uh, it's, it's just a self-imposed thing because We've been encouraged very strongly to do it and I've been preaching it. So I'm practicing upon it. And we're excited. Uh, we're not over overindulging when it comes to food, keeping yourself hydrated as much as possible. Uh, keep the zinc in, keep the, some of the protein in, making sure you're hydrated because it's not healthy to have a lot of protein with, without being hydrated. And that will help you against viruses. Keep yourself filled with vitamin C's if you can, with various other other little you know supplements. Don't overdo it because there is a fear of poisoning. But keep yourself healthy and fit, mashallah. Even if you have a few symptoms here and there, don't let anxiety overtake you. But just take a precaution. We're in it together. Most of us will make it out, but we care for the elderly. That's why we're saying passionately, please be serious. Be serious about this. It's not about you. It's about everyone else. Well, it may be about you too, because you might be one of those vulnerable. We care for you. We love you. That's why we are trying to compel the people to stay indoors as much as possible. Obviously, I'm addressing people from all over the world. So every country has arrived at a different point. We in Africa, we, we only have had two confirmed cases in Zimbabwe, but I do know that there may be many others. There probably are others. There are so many with so many symptoms, but unfortunately, we're just waiting for uh, some testing kits and we, we're getting into gear by the will of Allah. You know, we're not part of the advanced countries who have everything. Some of my friends have been messaging me, telling me, subhanAllah, uh, you need to do this and get this and do that and get this medication. That many just keep it in stock and in store. And I'm like, hey guys, this is Africa. We make dua to Allah and we have fresh organic vegetables and fruits in our gardens. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. My brothers and sisters, uh, I just want to quickly repeat, seek the forgiveness of Allah. It doesn't mean that you're guilty of committing crimes, but that is how you will achieve relief. I repeat that verse, Allah will not punish them for as long as they are seeking forgiveness. Also, there are so many other verses 
where uh, the, the pre previous prophets have told all their people to seek the forgiveness of Allah in order to achieve relief and the mercy of Allah. So the mercy of Allah comes when you seek forgiveness of Allah. Don't waste your time. I've seen some brothers and sisters waste their time online. You know what? For some, it might be the last few weeks in the, on, the, on earth. And imagine the last few weeks on earth, you're spending them in such a destructive way or in, in, in such a waste, you know, in, in a way that you're wasting time. Don't do that. Spend your time constructively. The dhikr of Allah. Cry to Allah. Expand your knowledge of the Quran. Read the Quran. Recite it. I was thinking, like I said in my earlier, uh, call it a distress call. But in my earlier video, I spoke about the Quranic lessons. Perhaps we may start uh, online lessons on that. I know many platforms are actually doing so much. Iman channel is thinking of something grand and great. So many others are doing a lot. May Allah bless everyone. Barakallah feekum. I pray for you. I'm sure you're all praying for me. Uh, and Alhamdulillah, I'm very well by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I thank Allah. Like I said, today's date, just for the record, Monday, the 23rd of March, 2020. The time is just after 10.30 p.m. in Zimbabwe. May Allah bless you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope that you will be able to tune in to another of these beautiful lessons that we will be having from the comfort of our homes. And I pray Allah gives me the ability to continue with this. Jazakumullah khair. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.